parents. Throughout history, we've struggled to get it right. We hope we won't pass on our emotional issues to our kids, and we swear we won't make the same mistakes our parents did. We all have great intentions, but something seems to get in the way. Let's look at what that might be. At Circle of Security Parenting, we believe that being emotionally available to our children in their needs is the key to doing our best as parents. We call emotional availability being with. It means teaching emotional intelligence by being with our children in all their feelings, like sadness, joy, anger, curiosity, pain, frustration, excitement, and so on. Being with children helps them understand, trust, and move on from feelings. And knowing someone is with them in their feelings helps children feel less overwhelmed and more secure. Decades of research backs this up. For parents, some of this comes easily, but other times our children express emotions that make us uncomfortable. So we pull away or try to overrule their feelings, which leaves them on their own. We do this because our children's feelings can trigger strong emotions in us. We think of it like this. Our history during childhood of how core people responded to our different emotions creates the background music for how we experience our children's feelings. Let's look at this example. This girl and her father have been enjoying time together in the park, but suddenly aware of the time, dad says, we need to go. When the girl hears this, she starts crying and gets increasingly angry. All at once, the dad's background music changes. The background music that is playing for the father right now, we call shark music. As it turns out, the dad's own mother was uncomfortable with loud displays of emotion, and she didn't know how to handle them. So throughout his childhood, she repeatedly told her son it was pathetic to cry, and she never ever asked him about his feelings of sadness or anger. His ability to deal with his daughter's emotion now is greatly affected by the experience with his mother then. Sharp music, we're rarely aware it's playing, but it's our past experiences telling us to be afraid of or uncomfortable with a feeling or need that is actually safe. When our sharp music limits our ability to respond to these feelings, our children learn to hide or feel ashamed of them. This is a problem because we're teaching our children to fear emotions that are actually both safe and essential in life. Most of us experience sharp music with one emotion or another, and it's different for everyone. But whenever it is triggered, our ability to respond to our children's needs is limited. The good news is, by simply calling it by name and reflecting on what our children need in the moment, we can turn down our sharp music. This is so important because if we can learn to manage our history of negative experiences and perceptions, we can respond to the truth of our child's current situation and be with them in it. Ultimately, this will help our children grow up with a better ability to understand and share more of the emotions they experience. There's no escaping it. Strong feelings are a challenge to manage as parents, but our children always benefit when we have an accurate response to what's happening rather than reacting to the sharp music we're bringing into the relationship. Remember, there's no such thing as perfect parenting, and blame never helped anyone feel more secure. That includes blaming ourselves. But the more often we can identify our sharp music, the better off our children will be.